Another week and more fodder for the cannon. I I'm sorry. But horrible puns aside, let's take a look at the delicious morsels gifted to us lore fanatics this week. As the title of this video suggests, this week is focused on the details surrounding the maps seen in the Halo 5 Guardians beta. So let's take a look at how much of my speculation was correct, and how much I seriously fucked up. Our first map is Truth. As it turns out, the map is set on a ship called Undiminished Entelechy, and the second ship seen in the map, Opening, being its sister ship, Purity of Spirit. It's an interesting combination of names. Entelechy is defined as the final form, insert DBZ Joe here, of some potential concept or function or, as I'm sure this is the definition 343 was going for, I just wanted to make a final form joke, a particular type of motivation to become all one can be. Undiminished motivation or inner strength and purity of spirit, two concepts very often intertwined in many spiritual beliefs. But enough about the names. Within the fiction, these two ships were among the first assigned to the Fleet of Particular Justice, and just before the Pillar of Autumn arrived at Installation 04, were ordered to conduct a close-range survey of the Ring by none other than the Prophet of Stewardship. For those who haven't read Halo the Flood, that's the designation of the Minor Prophet who was assigned to the Fleet of Particular Justice, and the individual upon whom most of the blame for the fuck-up that was the Battle of Installation 04 should be placed. And incidentally, it was confirmed that the Prophet of Stewardship is the one we see in hologram form. As it turns out, Undiminished Entelechy gathered quite a bit of intel, even collecting some Sentinels, but ultimately it was shot down by Thel when the ship was boarded by Flood. This actually leads us right into the next map, Regret. Like Truth, Regret is set on board Undiminished Entelechy, but after it was shot down and crashed on Installation 04. In the case of Regret, it seems that Halo's repair systems, the quote, damage control and environmental remediation protocols, accelerated the growth of local foliage resulting in what we see on the map. What's really interesting though is that the description notes that the fact that the details of the crash site are in Oni hands and being used for Spartan 4 training simulations is extremely suspect. We've already been to one fragment of Installation 04 and plenty more exist. As mentioned in the description for Truth, Undiminished Entelechy gathered quite a bit of intel from the ring, so perhaps Oni is interested in recovering said intel. Next up is Empire. Empire is set in 2523 on the human colony of Endesia in the capital Noctis. A fun side note, Endesia is actually a genus of moth in the Noctuidae family. Whether this is actually relevant to the map, I really can't say, but I thought it to be an interesting side note. The environment of the map is set in the facilities of a company known as AMG Transportation Dynamics. Insurrectionist activity peaked on the colony in response to the tightening grip of the UEG on the colonies in general, but also on the excess of the mega corporation that acted as Andesia's de facto governing body. The destruction on the map and in the surrounding city is the result. Following these attacks was a decade of bloody rebellion, until Covenant activity forced a temporary truce between the UNSC and local insurrectionist forces. Not an uncommon theme in Halo fiction. Eden is set on the same colony, presumably in the same city, but to be clear this is never directly stated. It seems that the anti-UEG sentiment is alive and well on Andesia, so Spartan 4s are regularly trained for the possibility of resurgent insurrectionist activity. Next up we have Pegasus, one of two Forge maps and one I was certainly surprised to see in this list. Even the Forge maps have explanations. So this one is set on Installation 05, the surface of which was largely cauterized by Sangheili Separatists following the events of Halo 2. Strange structures have apparently started appearing on the surface, perhaps part of the ring's repair systems. In response, Oni sent a basic layout of these structures to Spartan teams to start training and familiarizing, all under the assumption that missions to the ring may be necessary in the near future. Anyone else smelling hints of Halo 5's plot? Next up we have Orion, the other Forge map. Set on Installation 05, the maps are reconstructions of structures that, like Pegasus, have suddenly sprung up overnight, these ones near key power and data junctions. Unlike Pegasus, there has been noted organized activity among Sentinels in the area, and they are hostile. Could 2401 Penitent Tangent be trying to take his ring back? Finally, we have Trench and Crossfire, the breakout maps. As it turns out, these maps and the game type are part of a friendly competition and off-duty entertainment for the Spartan 4 fire teams. The appearance of the maps are more or less our first look at the war game simulator systems without the more advanced holographics normally laid over the nematic risers. It's like a stripped down version essentially. Also of interest is the fact that information is normally fed through a Spartan's neural interlace to help enhance the war game's experience. And that's generally the gist of this week's cannon fodder. 
There are a ton of great canon goodies throughout, but it also addresses something of a minor issue that came up when Halo's multiplayer was made part of the canon. We knew that Spartan 4 is trained via the War Games Simulator, but now we have specific reasons and really interesting hints at why certain environments are chosen. A possible return to Alpha Halo for data recovery, training in facilities on colony worlds in preparation for insurrectionist activity, training in reconstructions of unknown environments, and so on. With Halo 5, certainly more so than Halo 4, we get strong insight into what these Spartans are training for, and more importantly, a reason to care as to why. Before we go, let's take a look at the new articles in the Halo Universe section. This week we have the Series 12 Single Operator Lift Apparatus, or Jetpack, the Z4190 Temporal Protective Enfolder slash Stationary Shield, aka Bubble Shield, the Type 25 Rapid Assault Vehicle, aka Chopper, and the SRS-99 Series 5 Anti-Material, the Sniper Rifle. Much like last week and really as always, there's a lot of interesting information in these articles. For the jetpack, it mentions that new waves of Mjolnir armor will feature integrated thrusters, explaining the gameplay changes seen in Halo 5. However, this week the really interesting stuff comes from the Bubble Shield article. If you're familiar at all with the UNSC designations for Forerunner devices, you probably guessed that the Bubble Shield has a Forerunner origin. As it turns out, the UNSC Bubble Shield is based on a Forerunner device of similar function, one that I would love to see in upcoming games by the way. The stuff we see in Halo 3, however, are Covenant devices based on Bubble Shield prototypes taken from Reach after it fell. I almost feel like that's a reference to the Drop Shield, but I would have to wonder why the Covenant didn't preserve the healing function. Perhaps they sacrificed the healing ability for a greater shield strength. Who knows? Also of interest is that the Bubble Shield was being manufactured, in small quantities at least, until 2555, when Oni redirected research toward compatibility with Mjolnir shield emitters. Sounds like a reference to Spartan Strike, which does feature bubble shields. Of course, I could just be grasping at straws. Time will tell. And so that concludes this episode. And what an episode! As always, please check out the original article, link in the description. If you haven't read previous cannon fodder posts, there is an easily accessible archive with all previous posts, including posts that were originally part of the classic text-based Halo bulletins. For now, this has been Halo Cannon, and I'll see you next time. Hey guys, thanks for watching my video. It means more than I can express in a few minutes of audio. If you did like it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, share it around on whatever social media you see fit, and all that jazz. Thank you so much. Your support is everything. I would not be where I am without you. Thanks.